What is an enemy? I want to come to um, terms with the word enemy and I want to share my take on that word with you. Like I've said in previous videos, once we, if you're watching this and you're a born again Christian, have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, we automatically become enemies with Satan's children and anyone who may just be considering themselves neutral, people who are worldly, especially if we share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them or let them know that we have boundaries that we don't cross. Um, we become at odds with the world and with Satan's children. But one thing I have observed is that the enemies that I have, the enemies that I've created since I've been born again, it has not been a fair, even um, exchange. I would have preferred for us both to accept that we have different points of view, they go their way and I go mine. It doesn't have to be anything negative. I'm going to stay on my narrow path and they can do whatever they want to do. That's how I would have preferred it to go. I never went out of my way to hurt or destroy their life. Um, smear campaigns and all these things that children of Satan do, that's not my nature. And it wasn't my nature even before I was born again. But especially now as a child of God, I just want things to go positive. And I actually, in my heart and in my prayer time, very often pray for their salvation. So there's no hard feelings if we don't see eye to eye. And that's how I've approached people who are currently my enemy. However, on the other hand, for them, because they're operating from a demonic spirit, there can be no peace. There can be no, let us just accept that we don't see eye to eye. Oftentimes, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, people are operating from multiple demonic oppression and possessions. What I've observed is usually it's jealousy or envy that triggers the animosity and vitriol. Also having a hypersensitive spirit of offense. They get offended very easily and oftentimes I do believe it's because the demonic spirit within them um, ruminates. They, they, they can't help but be offended by the slightest thing and they don't come and speak to someone, myself in this um, situation, to try to iron things out so that we can get um, back on neutral terms, back on decent terms. The term enemy, you can't have an enemy without two parties, right? But very often, one person starts. One person creates the issue. And what I've observed, and maybe other children of God can admit this and can accept that this is what they've observed too. It comes from the child of Satan, the enemy status. It was never my intention for my enemies to be my enemy. And it was never my intention for God's vengeance to fall on them the way that it eventually will or has because of the things that they've done that God's vengeance had to get involved. Because one of the other things that I've learned as a child of God is not to take matters into my own hands. But when God takes the matters into his hands, since he can truly see the heart of a person, it's much worse of an outcome for them than anything I could ever imagine. That would be like me looking on the surface of the water and not realizing there are several sharks lurking un underneath the surface. That's how I believe God sees people. We see the surface, but he can see underneath. 
he can see what they really said against his children and what they really did to destroy the lives of his children. So when God's vengeance falls on them, it's a horrible situation for them. But it's appropriate. It was never my intention for my enemy to be my enemy in the first place. And that's what I wanted to share today. Taking responsibility and understanding that that's a major part of being an adult, a mature, a mature person, is taking responsibility for the roles and the part that I play and that you play and that we play in a situation. Um, crying victim all the time is not a mature way to live. But at times, we have to be honest with ourselves and really think about situations. Whether it was a, a childhood that was um, filled with abuse or a marriage or relationship that was um, emotionally abusive or physically abusive in some way. It's important to be honest with ourselves about the role that we played, but also not to underestimate an unfair situation. The main reason I'm making this video today is because I don't rejoice in the idea of people that have tried to destroy my life, tried to destroy my peace, and um, it's not my desire for them to be destroyed. It's not my desire for them to suffer. I want justice, yes. That would be just like um, the family of someone hearing the sentence of the individual that destroyed the life of their loved one. Yes, you want that person to suffer. You want that person to suffer because of justice. But it was never the family in that scenario's desire for this individual if they were innocent or if they didn't do what they did to suffer. It's in um, retaliation. It's in um, response to an evil that was done. It's justice. So I don't rejoice. I do want justice, though. I rejoice in justice and fairness and the fact that God is great and God sees after his children. Um, I, re I rejoice in that. But I never wanted to suffer at the hands of my enemies. I never wanted to experience um, smear campaigns or physical violence or lies and all these things, these negative things that Satan's children and people who have made themselves my enemy wanted to do. It's just very important for us to number one, take responsibility for roles that we played, but also to understand that sometimes it really is one person is the aggressor and the other person is the victim of the situation. And that's why I'm so grateful for God's vengeance and for God's justice because we need to know that in this life that we have, we give our lives to the Lord Jesus. We trust him that he's going to see and he's gonna take care of everything we need. He's gonna see after us and he's gonna make sure that those people, those children of Satan, those unrepentant, hate-filled individuals that go around and hurt people and, and harm people, um, sometimes aggressively, passive-aggressively, physically, emotionally, verbally, and oftentimes spiritually. I feel that's a very cowardly way to live, to secretly go behind the scenes and try to, dis try to destroy someone's character through character assassination or to go and seek demonic activity to try to destroy someone's life. But as children of Satan, that's the energy that they operate from. They're demonic and cowardly. 
But as children of God, we take the high road and we do what God wants us to do. And we walk on the narrow path and we let God's vengeance, however long it takes for his vengeance to fall upon them, let God handle it. But I just wanted to share that if I had my way, I wouldn't have any enemies. And all of us would fall in line and understand that God knows best and the Lord Jesus is the only way. But that's just not reality. Many people will not accept the Lord Jesus. So I'm always reminded of this verse, Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the powers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. May God bless you.